Squirrel! <laughs> Those of you who know me well will get that. If you haven't read today's U version Devo, Facing the Giant of Fear, then the squirrel reference is mute. Numbers chapter 13 is the key passage for facing the giant of fear. The Israelites' fear was of actual giants. The people who dwell in the land are strong, and besides, we, we saw the descendants of Anak there. We are, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. The land is a land that devours its inhabitants, and the people that, that we saw, they're of great height. And we seemed ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. <laughs> as long as we believe things that are not true, we will remain in prison by our fear of those lies. To enjoy freedom, we must learn to use God's weapons. Joshua and Caleb are asking the other ten spies, What is your problem? In the beginning of Numbers 14, the Israelites not only groaned and complained about the situation, they also accused Moses of bringing them into the wilderness so they could die. In other scriptures, we read that they complained about the food, God provided manna for them, and all they had to do was pick it up fresh every morning. But they didn't like the heavenly diet. In short, it wouldn't have mattered what God did for them or what Moses and Aaron told them. They were so used to being controlled by taskmasters, they embraced their new taskmaster of fear. Fear is like wildfire. When my fear is added to your fear, the situation only gets worse. The paralysis of fear becomes like a virus and infects everyone around us. They were negative about everything. When the slightest problem arose, they were ready to go back to Egypt they preferred bondage as slaves rather than pressing on into the promised land. When Moses sent 12 spies into the land and they came back with a report of how wonderful and fertile the land was, the fear mongers incited panic in the nation. There be giants in the land and they're going to crush us like bugs. Fear. Fear caused them to forget all the miracles God had done for them. They whined and they found fault with everything. They, they didn't need to ask, what is the problem? What they needed to learn to say is, I don't have a problem. I am the problem. The enemy in Canaan wasn't any worse, bigger, or more powerful than what they'd already faced. If God could destroy the Egyptians at the Red Sea, why wouldn't he give them another miracle? They were his people and he loved them. They themselves were their own problem, and they never accepted that fact. Forty years of wandering, they never got the message. So how about you and I? It's harder to examine our own lives and see how our fears are controlling us. Well, my situation's different. Might be true, but allowing the giant of fear to control you sounds pretty much the same as ancient Israel. We can be so caught up in our fear of, but what if, and, but what if, and, and, and seeing what might go wrong that we just can't see what God sees for us. It's time to stand up and face our giant. Have faith that he is ready to give you victory, no matter how small you might seem or how overwhelming the things that you have to face may seem. Believe that God is gonna give you victory. Lord, help me to overcome my fear of failure. Bring me to a place where my life is in line with your will and give me the confidence to step out in faith when I need to. Lord, when I worry about the future, would you, would you help me to be bold and trust in your promises for my life? Let the words of my mouth be uplifting and focused on the bright future you have for me. Because Jesus, you promised me life and that to the full. Thank you for every promise. Thank you that I am yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.